distorted image of the object needle is seen clearly here you can see the inverted image of the object needle very clearly but to locate the position of the inverted image of the object needle we need to place another needle on the optical bench this is known as the image needle so let us place the image needle on the optical bench now i am fixing the image needle in one of the upright and then place the image needle on the optical bench now looking into the concave mirror we adjust the positions of the object needle and the image needle until an inverted image of the object needle falls over the image needle by looking into the concave mirror we adjust the positions of the object needle and the image needle until an inverted image of the object needle falls over the image needle here you can see very clearly an inverted image of the object needle is over the image needle now by giving lateral motion to the needle we bring the inverted image of the object needle and the image needle in the same vertical line after that we adjust the heights of the needles until tip of the inverted image of the object needle coincides with the tip of the image needle This is because the battery in reality has some internal resistance R. So, the voltage across the terminals of the battery V is EMF minus IR, where I is the current in the circuit and R is the internal resistance of the battery. So, in order to measure the EMF of the cell, the current in the battery should be zero. The potentiometer works on the principle that 
when a wire of uniform area of cross section homogeneous composition and low temperature coefficient of resistance is connected to a battery and a steady current is passed through it then by ohm's law potential difference at the two ends of the wire is given by v is equal to ir where i is the current in the circuit r is the resistance of the wire now r is equal to rho into l divided by a v is equal to i rho into l divided by a i rho and a are made constant then the potential drop is directly proportional to the length of the wire v is directly proportional to l v is equal to k into l k is equal to v divided by l k is the potential drop per unit length or potential gradient let us understand the second principle on which the potentiometer works when two cells of emfs e1 and e2 are connected in a circuit in such a way that their positive ends are connected together and their negative ends together with a galvanometer the current from the cell e1 will flow in the anti clockwise direction whereas the current from the cell e2 will flow in the clockwise direction if e1 is greater than e2 the galvanometer deflects towards left if e1 is less than e2 the galvanometer deflects towards right if e1 is equal to e2 the galvanometer shows null deflection that is no current is flowing in the circuit in this case the potential drop v1 is equal to v2 e1 minus ir is equal to e2 minus ir as i equal to 0 v1 is equal to e1 and v2 is equal to e2 therefore e1 is equal to e2 in the real world a transistor looks like this and in the circuit diagram an npn transistor is represented this way in npn transistor a p type semiconductor is sandwiched between two n type semiconductors the first thick layer is called the emitter which is heavily doped the second thin layer is lightly doped and the third layer is the collector here the collector section is larger than the emitter section in emitter based forward bias the electrons which are the majority carriers in n type emitter region move into the base region this current is called emitter current ie out of the larger number of electrons 2% combine with the few holes in the base causing a small base current ib the other 98% of the electrons cross over the collector base junction and enter the collector region and they are attracted by the positive of the power supply vcc this current is referred to as ic to study the characteristics let us connect the npn transistor in the circuit for input characteristics for different constant collector voltage we notice the corresponding change in the base voltage and base current ib for output characteristics for different constant base current ib we notice the corresponding changes in the collector current ic and the collector voltage vc consider a convex lens and mount it on the optical bench now place the object needle at a distance of 1.5 times the rough focal length of a given convex lens now mount the convex mirror on the right side of the lens by adjusting the positions of the uprights you will observe 
an inverted image of the object needle. Now, if we remove the convex mirror, the light rays from the object needle will meet at the center of curvature of the convex mirror. To locate the center of curvature, we mount another upright known as image needle. Adjust the position of the upright and you will observe an inverted image of the object needle on the tip of the image needle. The distance between convex mirror and the tip of the needle gives us the radius of curvature of the convex mirror. Half the radius of the curvature gives the focal length of the convex mirror.